What's going on y'all? Riley here and today I'm going to be giving some recommendations of some awesome single volume manga so stay tuned. Now often when I make videos recommending manga, I, I know that I talk about series that are much longer and you know some of them that are not that long like something that's only 10 volumes but sometimes I talk about series that I love that are you know 20, 40 or in the case of One Piece something that's almost at 100 volumes. And I know that not everyone has the time to invest into reading something that is that long. And not only that but not everyone has the money on hand to invest into something that might be 10, 20, 40, 95 volumes long. So I wanted to kind of take a turn and do something a little bit different and talk about some stories that I really enjoy uh, that are collected in single volumes. Now I'm not doing any recommendations, at least not in this video, for anthology stories. So don't count on stuff like Urasawa's Sneeze or a bunch of those hardcovers that we see from Junji Ito like Smashed and, and all that stuff. Um, that would be more a topic for another video for another time, but I'm talking about stories that have a beginning, a middle, and an end that are collected in a single volume. Whether they originally have been released as a single volume or if it's a re-release into a multiple volumes in one, um, though I'm not doing the 12 in one Death Note all in one story because that's kind of ridiculous. Some of these are going to be familiar because of the creators involved, some of these maybe not. Um, and I'm not listing these in any particular order. It's not from my least favorite to favorite or anything like that. It's just a bunch of books that I'm recommending um, and I'm doing so based on those creators and their familiarity or also for the different genres that they occupy. So let's go ahead and get started. Now at the top, this is a book from one of my absolute favorite creators of all time. Many people know that I'm a huge fan of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure and I have been for about half of my life now uh, since about 2005. And there's one book that he has that's published in English that a lot of people might not actually know about, and that is Rohan at the Louvre. Now, this book does focus on the character of Rohan Kishibe, who makes his first appearance in part four of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, Diamond is Unbreakable. As a lot of people know, Rohan has appeared in a lot of different short stories, in different OVAs and stuff like that. He gets a lot of playtime outside of just Diamond is Unbreakable. And this is the only story of his that's available in English that you can purchase. It's on Amazon. You can find a copy easily. This beautiful hardcover is a fully color illustration book of a story about Rohan that has to do with him at the museum in Paris. Now this is one of a series of various different books from different creators that involve the museum and they are created specifically for that museum. The story itself is pretty simple, there's not a lot of depth to it, but what really makes this one such a great volume that I recommend, especially if you're a fan of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, is because of the fact that it has amazing artwork. This was done I think around the time that he was working on Steel Ball Run, so if you're familiar with the artwork from that part, you're going to know exactly what to expect from this. And it is just absolutely stunning what this looks like in person. These oversized pages on the hardcover, it's such a great presentation that honestly any fan, even if you're not a fan of JoJo's, this is something that any manga collector should have in their collection. I absolutely love this book. Um, it took me a while to actually get it. I didn't pick this up until maybe two years ago, but I'm so happy that I did and I'm so happy that I got to add it to my JoJo collection. Now this one isn't published by Viz, um, but I'm hoping that they will decide to publish a lot of those other Rohan stories. Maybe not in such a spectacular fashion as this one, but at the very least it'd be nice to get those. This next book is one for fans of Berserk. If you're a fan of Kentaro Miura's epic manga series and you're kind of growing antsy in between waiting for volumes to come out because of all the delays that he constantly has, this is kind of a good way to whet your appetite in between volumes. And that is another book published by Dark Horse, Gigantomaxia. Now, this single volume story from Miura is obviously a lot shorter than Berserk is, and it's a lot more of a simple story as well. Um, we follow a couple of characters after something called the Great Destruction um, as they're going through these wastelands, and there are a bunch of these monsters out there, demi-humans and stuff, and the main characters, uh, Delos and Prome, who we see on the cover here, kind of get sucked into this conflict with a lot of these insectoid, humanoid creature things. The story is not the deepest, it's not nearly as 
uh, deep as we get from Berserk or anything like that, but I really enjoyed this one mostly because of Miura's artwork. If you enjoy the way that he illustrates the different monsters and like the apostles and stuff in Berserk, then this is something that you're definitely going to get a lot of uh, enjoyment out of. And next up, from another familiar creator, I've got something from Akira Toriyama. Now, Toriyama, of course, is known for having one of the most popular manga of all time, most popular anime of all time, in Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, and now Dragon Ball Super. And then he also is known for his comedy series that preceded Dragon Ball, Dr. Slump. But he's also been known for a lot of short, single-volume stories. In English, we have three books that are published of his, uh, of those single-volume books. We have Jocko the Galactic Patrolman, which is kind of a uh, spin-off in ways of Dragon Ball Z. And then we also have Kawa, which is more of a kid's story. But the one that I wanted to highlight here is Sandland. Now, Sandland was actually published in the monthly Shonen Jump magazine when it first came out in the US. It was published alongside Dragon Ball Z, Yu Yu Hakusho, and Yu-Gi-Oh!, as well as some titles that were not familiar to American audiences at the time, like Shaman King and Naruto and One Piece. Now, this is less of a Shonen fighting series and more of an action-adventure series, as we follow these characters in this desert wasteland. Essentially, all of the water is contained and bogarted by the king of this country. Kind of think about the plot to Mad Max Fury Road in a way. Um, now he is sells the water essentially to people but at such high prices that they are not able to afford it and one of the people has gotten tired of it and has decided to go and enlist the help of a couple of demons and try to essentially destroy the dam where he's holding all the water so that everyone else can have the water. It's a fun story. It's a great look at kind of another side of the work that Toriyama does. I really enjoyed it. And if you're able to read it, if you're able to find a copy of it, I really do recommend Sandland. Now, speaking of Toriyama, this one is uh, just kind of a bonus recommendation. But if you're a fan of Dragon Ball Z, this is a great single volume book that kind of takes an isekai spin on that, and that is Dragon Ball Z That Time I Was Resurrected as Yamcha. Just like the stuff like That Time I Was Resurrected as a Slime, this single volume story has someone who dies and is resurrected in the world of Dragon Ball Z as the character of Yamcha. It's a really fun spin on that character and kind of retells some of the events of that story. If you're a fan of Dragon Ball Z, this is a great one. I highly recommend. It's a hilarious manga and just a really quick read as well. This next one is a story that many people might be familiar with, though probably under another title. The manga is based off of a novel that came out in Japan, but there was also a Hollywood movie starring Tom Cruise and Emily Blunt that came out several years ago that was titled Edge of Tomorrow. The manga, though, and the book are titled All You Need Is Kill. And it's the same story, this basic idea of kind of a Groundhog Day type deal uh, where the character dies and every time he dies he goes back to the beginning of that day. Except instead of like in Groundhog Day where you see Bill Murray trying to make himself into a better person, in this story we have uh, this soldier who is essentially trying to figure out every day that he gets to come back to life what he can do to try and help prevent the destruction of the world by these aliens that they've been going to war against. It's a really great fast-paced action series with a bunch of amazing sci-fi elements. If you've seen the movie, this is still going to be a really good one to check out. The plots diverge a little bit, but it's different enough that I find them completely separately enjoyable, I guess I would say. And it features beautiful artwork from Takeshi Obata, whose name you're probably going to recognize from Hikaru Nogo, Death Note, and also from Bakuman. Next up for the video game lovers, this is something that I don't see a lot of people talk about, but is a really fantastic single volume book, and that is Shotaro Ishinomori's adaptation of The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. Not only is this one of the finest of the Zelda video games, in my opinion, definitely the best of the 2D Zelda games, but this is the best Zelda manga adaptation for my money. Now, the story, of course, is very condensed, so if you're not familiar with the actual story of the video game, you're probably not going to get a lot out of it. But Ishinomori, who was known for a series like Cyborg 009, gives us some really beautiful artwork throughout this book. And it's shown to us in full color on these really great oversized magazine pages, so this is just a fantastic presentation of this manga. If you're a fan of Zelda at all, this is a must-have book in your collection. I know a lot of people do have the later Zelda adaptations, but this is one that I think if anything you have to have this one. I mean, how freaking beautiful is that full color artwork? Honestly.
This next one's a little bit of a different change of pace, and this is from Jiro Taniguchi. We have The Walking Man. Just as the title suggests, this is a story about a man who goes on walks. It's a very simple manga. Uh, basically, you follow the main character as he takes strolls around his neighborhood, as he goes and sees different animals, sees different people, just kind of enjoying taking in his surroundings. And it's something that the reason I like to recommend this book is because it's so entirely relaxing to read. It's the type of book that if you have had a hard day, this is the perfect thing to sit down with a cup of tea and just sit on the couch, read, relax, and let go of all of your worries. The Walking Man is, without a doubt, the most relaxing manga that I have ever read. But not only that, Taniguchi's artwork is incredible and just beautifully detailed in every single page. So if that sounds good to you at all, then I highly recommend picking this one up. Now I know a lot of people, if they're going to talk about a Taiyo Matsumoto book, are probably going to recommend Tekken Concrete Black and White, but I wanted to go into a slightly different direction and recommend a book that a lot of people may have not read, and that is Cats of the Louvre. Now Cats of the Louvre, just like the Rohan book that I showed at the beginning of this video, is one of those books that was developed for the museum. Uh, Viz Media actually published a couple of these books themselves, this one as well as the Urasawa book, uh, Mujirushi, that came out sometime last year, I believe. This is a fantastic kind of fairy tale book, though. It has such a different feel from any other manga, and that's kind of why I wanted to recommend it here, because it doesn't feel like most manga that you'll read. It feels more like something that was written and drawn by someone in France. It feels like uh, more of the French-produced comics that you'll see from publishers like Humanoids, rather than something from a Japanese manga creator. The story is, uh, like I said, kind of fairy tale adjacent as we follow these cats that live in the museum and see what their lives are like and these kind of stories and dramas that they go through uh, themselves interacting with the various cats in their museum community. Now the artwork is absolutely stunning in this book, but I do know that some people might be turned off by the humanoid versions of the cats that appear throughout here. Uh, when the cats are around people, they appear as normal cats, but when they're on their own, they have more uh, of a humanoid appearance, although they do retain feline like features like their noses and ears and stuff like that. And some people might not be crazy about that, but Something about it just works in a way that I would never have expected it to. I guess maybe you just have to read the book to find out. If you want a deeper review of this one, I actually did one uh, several months ago. Actually, I think about this time last year. Uh, so if you're interested in that, I'll try and get a link down below so you can check that one out. Next up, I have one from one of my absolute favorite manga creators who is responsible for one of my favorite series that I talked about in my top 10 concluded manga video, and that is Inio Asano with his book Solanin. Now, if you're not familiar with uh, Inio Asano's works, I feel like Solanin is the perfect book to kind of get you into him, uh, kind of familiarized with the types of stories that he tells. It's not quite as deep or dark as something like Goodnight Poon Poon is, uh, but it does go into some of those similar territories with some of the similar themes. This story is also one that I think is really great to read if you're one of those 20-somethings who've just gotten out of college and are trying to figure out what you want to do with your life, as that's the situation that we see these characters in at the beginning of this story. It focuses on a couple of people who, like I mentioned, just got out of university and they're working their jobs and kind of just making ends meet. And then they decide at some point that they don't want to just live life to survive, that they want to do the things that they want to do with their life. And they decide to break away from their mundane jobs and start exploring things that would uh, kind of fulfill their desires and, and make them happier. And that's something that I think is really noble and something that really called out to me when I read it, though I didn't really make the same changes in my life that they did in this book. There is a lot more to this story than what I've just mentioned, but I don't want to spoil anything. I highly recommend this. It's absolutely one of my favorite single volume stories of all time. If you have not read this, definitely pick up Solonin because it is so worth it. There's also an epilogue chapter, so technically I guess there's more than one volume, and it was released as two volumes in Japan, um, but I'm not going to count the epilogue because it's just a single chapter that you can add on, basically. And for the last two books I'm talking about in this video, they both from, come from one of my favorite creators, someone who I think most people are familiar with from all the different works that are being published right now, and I actually have his work on my shirt now that I think about it, and that is Junji Ito. Starting off with Uzumaki, this is my absolute favorite of his works. 
Junji Ito is, of course, very well known for his horror works in manga, and that's mostly what he produces. But he's also known for his kind of absurdist sense of humor that he wraps his horror in, which works so well uh, because he uses such weird and strange iconography and imagery in his manga that sometimes, even though you're sitting there scared of what you're reading and letting these things kind of infiltrate your mind and haunt you at night they're weird and silly and you can't help but laugh i think that gyo more personifies that uh in general but i think that uzumaki is one that works just incredibly well as a longer form horror story now this was originally released in three volumes but viz did release it in this beautiful hardcover volume um the story itself is about a town that is just overtaken by spirals they just appear absolutely everywhere hence the name uzumaki um and as the story goes on, these spirals go from being very small and slightly noticeable to just, like I said, completely overtaking everything. It's very haunting. It's very well told. I absolutely love this book. But the other Junji Ito book that I wanted to talk about is something that's very different from his other works because it lends itself more towards reality than into the haunting and very unrealistic horror that he does in most of his stories, and that's his adaptation of Osamu Dazai's No Longer Human. Now this classic Japanese novel has been adapted by many different creators over the years, and Junji Ito kind of got to put his spin on it in this book, and we get something that is a lot more grounded in the story that it's telling, as it is about the main character's life and all of the hardships and all of the terrible things that he does. Um, as he goes on with his life, hence the name No Longer Human, he eventually feels like all the things that he's done in his life make him no longer a human. He gets to, Ito that is, gets to kind of infuse some of his horrific imagery into this story in ways that really work well even though you're telling a story that is a lot more grounded. I really loved this one when I read it. This was something that I expected to enjoy, but I didn't expect to enjoy that much. So if you want something that is more of a grounded story that's, I mean, it's almost an autobiography by the original author uh, in a way. So if you want something that sounds more like that rather than a horror story like Uzumaki, this is something that would be really great because um, it still is kind of a terror story, but I wouldn't call it horror, I guess, if that makes sense. Anyway, I love this book. I highly recommend No Longer Human. It is a beautifully told book, and this is a beautiful collection as well. So those are my recommendations for some great single volume stories. I hope that everyone watches this at least gets one new book to try out out of this video. If you watched this and decided to pick up something that I recommended, let me know down below which of the books that you are looking forward to reading. And if you have your own single volume manga stories that I didn't mention here that you want to recommend to me or you want to recommend to other viewers of this video, go ahead and comment down below. I'm very curious what you guys come up with, if it's something that I've read before or it's something that I'm not familiar with. Thank you so much for joining me in watching this video. I hope that it was fun and informative. For everyone that's already subscribed to the channel, thank you so much for returning. And if you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit that button so you're notified of all the other content that I put out every single week related to manga or comic books. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out.